Well, we're still talking about these issues, and we're going to go straight uh, to our Buja, uh, Buja studios, where we have uh, Uluwale Osadeozi. He's the INEC, and that's the Independent National Electoral Commissioner, Director on Voter Education and Publicity, uh, to give us an insight into all of these issues. Um, always a pleasure to have you join us. Uh, perhaps let's take it from uh, the wreck in River State. I mean, INEC has brought out the list for the states, um, you know, assembly candidates for that and candidates also uh, for the governorship election. And we hear Zamfara not on the list, Zamfara APC that is, and then Rivers APC. Um, what, what's the next thing? I mean, what do you expect perhaps these political parties to do, seeing that um, there is almost little time for them? If you can hear me, Mr. Osazuzi. Yeah, I can, I, I can hear you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Talking about the list now, um, what do you think? What would I mean? What is the advice for the political parties that do not have their names on that list? What do you expect them to do? And this is not forgetting that INEC was also part of the process of their primaries. Well, um, we're not a part of the process of your primaries. But you monitor. It's restricted, limited okay. to monitoring of those primaries. Uh, we, are, we are not an advisory body, so we cannot give advice to any political party as what they should do or not do. But it is clear what should happen or what is going to happen. Now, any party who is not on the ballot cannot canvass for votes, cannot partake, cannot be there. No agent from that party will be recognized in the polling unit. We are not part of the process. Um, it's not all 91 party, uh, political parties that are fielding candidates. So... This, uh, like any other party that's not filling the candidate, will not be part of the process. We only accredit agents of uh, those parties that are filling candidates. They, will only, they are the ones going to be allowed into the collation process, into the polling units, and everything else. There are members as individuals can go and vote. That's, 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 that's a prerogative. No problem with that. But nobody else, in a formal way, they will not be recognized. They will not be given copies of the result sheets because they're not partaking. The law restricts that to the uh, uh, political parties sponsoring candidates at that election. So uh, well, there's no advice to give to them, but that's what well, the law should take its course. Let's talk about PVC collection. A lot of people are wondering how far so far have a lot of people uh, responded to collecting the PVCs across the states? Yes, um, a number of people have responded. I don't know whether it's quite uh, the numbers we expect, but come February the 8th, the last day for collection, we'll uh, close that chapter and we'll release to the public the total number of uh, PVCs collected, and those are the people who are eligible to vote at the elections. Um, so we have the next couple of days. Well, the crowds have been, in many places, have been quite impressive. Um, we hope to attend to everybody who comes out to collect their cards before that, that date. But after that date, February the 8th, end of the matter regarding collection of PVCs. I must also ask you um, the recent comments by the River State Governor um, saying that He's accused the federal government of directing INEC to work with internet service providers to shut down internet access during the election. Is this true? Oh, well, um, making an accusation is as easy as drinking a glass of cold water on a warm day. Um, but it would have been useful to us if he had uh, backed that with some uh, basis for which he reached that conclusion. It is totally untrue. It's incorrect. I'm not, we don't take directives from the federal government or any government or agency or any person, actually. Um, we hope that the, the Internet service will work well on that day because in the piloting of uh, transmission results, we're still going to pilot the things, and we, it's dependent on the Internet working well. But we, it, with or without that, there still will be manual uh, collation of results. That is the one that is known, in, that's the extant law. So whether the Internet works or it does not work, we will. Uh, use uh, the manual collection to collect results, so that will not affect the results. It might affect the ability of citizens to report to the uh, INEX Citizens Contact Center about challenges they may face in the field or make reports to us. Uh, we are dependent on the Internet uh, for that. Of course, we make calls. We are dependent on the Internet. And uh, we hope that the, the service providers will work as usual. Mr. Sazuzi, many thanks. INEC uh, Director on Publicity and Voter Education. Thank you for joining us at this time. Well, as the general elections draw near, former President Lushegon Basenjo says hope for Nigeria lies in democracy with good governance 
and that can be derived from a free and credible election. The former president was speaking in Abuja, where he said opposition is good for any democracy. He, however, asked INEC to set a good example with the 2019 elections for other African countries. Our hope lies in democracy with good governance as one of the hallmarks of which is free, fair, transparent, and credible election. Between now and the next year, there are four significant countries where elections are taking place in West Africa. Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, and Côte d'Ivoire. The incumbent in the four cases who are in opposition and took over from ruling parties. It was good for democracy. The world is looking at these four countries with the incoming election to see what will be their contribution to cumulatively strengthen, deepen, and stabilize democracy. Let's move over now to Kano, where our correspondent Idris Jibrin gives us the latest on the political atmosphere, security arrangements and the build-up to the 2019 elections. Political gladiators in Kano are already preparing for the D-Day. Yesterday, President Mohamed Buhari flagged off his re-election campaign and certified Governor Abdullahi Ganduji as APC gubernatorial candidate in Kano. However, the concern of most voters in Kano state has to do with the security of lives and property. Therefore, according to the police public relations officer, DSP Abdullah Yaharuna, adequate security measures have been put in place to ensure a peaceful conduct of the polls. He, however, indeed explains that various political party candidates have signed a peace accord document to formally agree with the security guidelines during the elections. Therefore, the command is saying that it will not take it lightly with any political party that operates outside the peace accord document that they have already signed. Even though it is still not clear on how many police officers will be deployed in Kano for the presidential election, but the command's public relations officer confirms that a reasonable number of police officers, including the command strike force and the immediate response unit, are already on standby to ensure a peaceful conduct of the polls. He also calls on members of the public to conduct themselves in accordance with the law. Idris Jubrin, reporting from Kanu. Many thanks, Idris. Still to come on the program, an expert speaks on security ahead of the polls. Please join us again. <laughs> 